the cities that William Corliss has found and documented in his epic, epic archaeological series called the Source Book Project is, is profound. Those books are getting harder and harder to find. My publisher sent me two of them. One was called Handbook of Puzzling and Amazing Artifacts by William Cordes. It was basically put together by him. And it basically showed all these things that the general public doesn't know. Oil companies, coal diggers, construction companies have found at depths in between 25 and 200 feet below the soil of North America evidence of a civilization that had been buried by cataclysm. Whole paved streets, pavers, houses with basements, two, two wooden ships with strange symbols have already been found in North America under mountains in the Rockies. Now other ships have been found under mountains in the Alps too, So, and also in South America in a silver mine uh, digging for ores. Uh, creating a new shaft, they opened up a, a, a cavern, found a whole full ship, uh, all the skeletons were intact and all that, but uh, I believe that that one was, was documented by David Hatcher Childress, or Jacques Valet, I don't remember, but I have these notes, I have all the I have so much notes you wouldn't believe, but when it comes to the Phoenix phenomenon, we cannot say that it only, it only darkens the sun for a two and a half year to three hour period. It only causes earthquakes. It only causes a horn blast every once in a while that causes pe people to sink into the ground, animals to go crazy, and people to lose all their senses and fight and kill each other. We can't only say that the Phoenix phenomenon appear appears and uh, causes these, these geomagnetic storms and these lightning bolts coming in the sky that, are, that don't hit areas in the country and they don't hit people. They only hit stone structures that are built by people because the Phoenix phenomenon every 138 years does just this but it doesn't do it every time the last time it was here for which I released three videos and have two full chapters in my book when the sun darkens the last time Phoenix was here was in May 1902 and in 1902 the Phoenix deposited deposited hundreds of billions of tons of red red rain red right cl red clay dirt and uh red mud so much red mud fell from the skies that many ship captains in their logs had recorded in the month of april may and june that they had literally got all hands on deck to do nothing but bucket mud and throw it back overseas before their ships capsized that's pretty profound so mud's very heavy it's not like water it doesn't run off it stays on the ship and it weighs it down so uh, there, it wasn't just that, but earthquakes, volcanoes. Uh, volcanoes happen very, uh, pretty frequently, but in, in May of 1902, a volcano in St. Pierre incinerated 30,000 people in an instant. It's on Martin, uh, the island of Martinique in the French Caribbean. That's just one example. There are so many examples of Phoenix resets. But the Phoenix phenomenon is deeper than a natural occurrence. It's a weapon, and it's a weapon that conceals what it's doing. I used to believe that it was killing people, and, and people were vanishing, and, and, and it, I used to believe all that. But it seems that there are, we are being observed. Maybe the lunar observatories, maybe the, maybe the variable stars that I have documented, their strange behavior during Phoenix Phenomenon episodes, are, uh, it has something to do with this observation. But the Phoenix phenomenon has been exercising discretionary powers. And this is very, very interesting. We should pay attention because it seems like any time humans are struggling, they're not doing very well, they're not, they're, their infrastructures are already in a state of collapse or collapsing, uh, they might be on the brink of starvation. I mean, the Phoenix phenomenon does not activate. It only activates highly localized areas every 138 years where civilizations are thriving and where the people have become oppressed. Over and over I have documented that it seems to me that the Phoenix phenomenon is like a weapon against not humanity, but humanity's overseers. Because while it appears to 
destroy civilizations and it appears to destroy, destroy all kinds of... To me, what I'm seeing is that the mass vanishings of people is almost like rapture prophecy. We don't have any evidence those people died. We have found many ancient cities that were completely empty and completely buried in mud. Oh yes, we have. We found many of them. And archaeologists always concoct the most inane theories that these populations had actually spent the time to go bring dirt. And if, if, if you guys haven't done it, you don't know. One bucket of dirt is 40 pounds. It's heavy. Can you imagine a population bringing buckets or even sacks of dirt to bury a city? Well, let me tell you something. The energy output required to bury a city the way we have found cities buried is more time and more expertise and more energy output than building the damn city itself. Archaeologists are wrong. These, these cities are buried, but they're not buried by humans. The humans vanish. Where are their skeletons? Where are their remains? They don't just up and change change locations. There was a cataclysm. There was earthquakes. There's all kinds of things going on. But I can't find any evidence of the people. Sometimes I build a theory, but I have no no I have no traditions. I have no chronographical records that would, by which I can uh, basically base this off of. I have a suspicion, and that suspicion tells me that the Phoenix weapon is specifically a weapon against the rulers of this world because they would rather destroy the entire world than to give up their dominion over humans. That's what they would rather. So, whoever designed this Phoenix weapon designed it for them. It's designed to penetrate deep into the earth and to get them in their hiding places, in their bunkers, in their dumps, in their, in their uh, uh, subterranean refuge cities, safe haven submarine cities, wherever they, wherever they try to hide, there's nowhere safe. Just like the Deccan, Deccan traps show us. The Deccan traps are two mile high lava flows in India. We know from traditions that there are cities and civilizations buried under that lava, but nothing could survive that. Couldn't have predicted that either. So, the Phoenix phenomenon can't be something that we can actually isolate. Yes, many times it's dark in the sun, many times it's called great earthquakes, many times it's been hemispheric, many times it's been worldwide. We don't have we don't have enough data on the Phoenix phenomenon to know, other than the fact that it's like six different types of, of phenomena, and they operate in different areas in the world. 